The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. And, well, what do we got going on here? Markets up slightly on the S&Ps, up uh, just a hair or less than seven. Uh, we'll call it eight points on the S&P cash, uh, 2171. What is different today? Where is Waldo? What is different? What, are, what does this thing have that the other thing doesn't have? Well, I'm going to say it is a volume. Uh, I'm going to read the volumes off at the, the top of the 2 o'clock Eastern hour for the last few days. 3.4 billion shares. Yesterday we had, uh, yeah, that was yesterday. Uh, day before that, 3.2 billion shares. 4.2 uh, billion shares. 4 billion shares. So from the election, we've had some fairly extensive volume. Uh, what do we have now? 2.8 billion shares. So we're back to a little bit more than pre-election day. And that's really now where the markets start to move. We've got a few things that are going to buck the trend for the next couple of days. We will talk about those. But at the moment, do we have anything of an impending nature that would move this market very uh, uh, big, more than eight points, which is basically noise in my book. It's not a trend. Um, but uh, most likely... For this week, we're going to see the high, since it is options expiration week, in the next uh, 24 hours. So maybe could we go up uh, 2180? I think we could. But there's something else that's telling me we could probably come back to 2160s by Friday's close. We'll get into that. That's what they call in the industry a teaser. In the meantime, we need to get uh, started uh, on the news. That it's all just a little bit of history repeating. History really doesn't repeat, but it certainly rhymes. Uh, the Federal Reserve on this day in 1994 raises interest rates by three quarters of a percentage point, one of the biggest hikes ever, and the sixth increase so far in 1994. Already bearish bond analysts turned down right dismal, forecasting that interest rates will soon go above 8%. Ah, God. Willing. Anyway, uh, interest rates fall in 1995 long term. Treasury bonds have done uh, had their best year since uh, 1982 by the end of that year, returning 31.7 percent on average. So uh, eh, everybody thinks one thing eh, probably going the other way on this day in 1994. In 1971, uh, one of these things that uh, if you follow technology, you find out. Uh, that a lot of things happen accidentally. Uh, people are in the right place at the right time. Uh, wasn't that they weren't doing anything and a bunch of money fell on them. But a lot of times there's just a gap in business uh, thought uh, and business uh, imagination. And on this day in 1971, the microprocessor uh, is officially born. Intel introduces its 4004 chip. Anybody? Anybody? Ever have a computer with a 4004 chip on it? Huh. Anyway, uh, Ted Hoff and uh, Frederico uh, Fagan uh, both uh, got uh, their name on the patent. An eighth of an inch long by a sixteenth of an inch wide it held over 2,000 transistors and almost as much computational power as a 30-ton ENAC computer of 1946. But the holder of the commercial rights, Bizcom of Japan, sees no use for the chip and sells its entire interest to Intel for $60,000. Seems like a, almost like a giving the Indians uh, beads for all of Manhattan, doesn't it? Seems like pennies, even uh, less than pennies on the dollar. On this day in 1971, uh, this gave uh, Intel really a foothold 
Uh, and the big money was to come about 11 years later with the launch of the PC. But uh, still a big deal out there. Uh, when did they go public? I think they went public in 1990, or 1985. So uh, it took a little while out there. Anyway, uh, lots of exciting stuff happening back in history on this day. Other things going on, the NSA uh, is uh, going, goes trading. Uh, apparently, there's some interesting articles out here today. If you're trading against uh, some of the quants, uh, they've uh, basically gone into uh, the data business. A very interesting article today about um, the uh, BlackRock having its own quantitative uh, trading or quant arm in San Francisco. Name of this thing is Scientific Active Equity. Uh, these guys are actually taking space shots every five minutes, uh, satellite images, and seeing what's actually going on in China compared to what's not going on in China. Right now, they say that the China uh, real estate boom is actually slowing. Now, they're watching how many dump trucks move around, things going up, things going down. Uh, probably a much smarter way than actually losing or listening to the state-run press. But I thought it was, they're going all NSA. I don't think we have that ability, but uh, we can know that those guys just got the... Uh, big eye on the prize over there in China. Probably a much better thing than trying to listen to the chai comms themselves. Uh, it is a mad, 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 mad market. Uh, we'll get into uh, some of the stuff that's moving out here uh, yet already um, as we move on. Let me get this situated up here. Uh, what else is going on here? Okay. Well, we got a lot of stocks that are moving, starting to see some earnings uh, happen. We'll uh, talk more about earnings in the next segment. But uh, all the way through Thursday night, uh, we're going to have at least a decent amount of earnings. Um, the one real big hope out here was that uh, HD, uh, Home Depot, would set the tone for the rest of the week. Uh, they did fairly decent uh, before the... Uh, earnings call. Uh, now they're off about three uh, and a half percent uh, down on some fairly de decent volume here. Let me redraw this chart with uh, some other stuff going on. Uh, but I didn't give much uh, hope uh, for Home Depot, mostly because we really knew that higher interest rates, in fact, you know, anywhere from an eighth to a quarter, now everybody's uh, a quarter uh, point higher on the interest rate, that that wasn't going to be good for them. Uh, they basically are saying the same thing, and that is higher interest rates will slow down. The only way that they made their numbers this time was Hurricane Mitch. I think it was Mitch. Wasn't that the one that was just out? Anyway, they said that uh, they made uh, about $200 million on Hurricane Mitch, and without that, they wouldn't have made their numbers. A lot of people are looking at that along with the higher interest rates and saying Home Depot still a very good business, but maybe still problematic long term as the next couple of years probably will see higher interest rates for homes. Actually, this is kind of a good thing long term for Home Depot, but in the short term, they're going to go from selling things to uh, uh, a lot of uh, builders to selling things to homeowners in the near future. We'll be back in a minute. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software 
software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Hey, takes your phone calls now, now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-445-1044 And we got a lot of people trying to pile into the long side volumes falling off a little bit 2.9 billion shares as we uh, hit the uh, second segment uh, 2174 on the S&P cash. I was saying that there's probably more of a uh, organic reason for this market to go sideways into Friday. Uh, this is kind of the end of the push. But uh, somewhere probably around uh, 2155 to 2170 is where we, at least options, are highly suggesting we will close on Friday. So I don't see a lot of upside in this market. Yeah, could we have a surprise? We could, but most of the surprises I'm seeing are much more like Home Depot. And that is, you know, unless they had an, an, an a, a uh, event like a, a hurricane, uh, they weren't going to make their money or make their numbers. Uh, everybody's kind of looking at that forward going along with higher interest rates on a lot of these. Uh, we continue to see it, but um, options as of about to noon today when I ran this, uh, we're pointing to a fairly good point of about 2115 on the spies. Can that go as high as 2117? Or I mean, uh, 217 on the spies. The answer is yes. What are we trading out right now on the spies? 217. So this is kind of at the very far end of what we should expect uh, for what's going on out there. Um, you know, there's a billion dollars to be had just on spy options if they could get it back down to 215. Uh, but my guess is that it'll probably be more like 216. Um, but uh, pretty good indication that there isn't a lot going to happen. My guess is that if we are going to break out, if we're going to go much higher, we're going to continue to move around in here. Same thing if we're going lower. We're going to kind of come back into this range on Friday. Monday and Tuesday, options rollovers for uh, the uh, end of the year and into January start. That's going to tell us where at least the option market makers who are the best traders in the world, are telling us this market will go. So uh, I just, it's very hard for me to see any kind of significant upside or downside through this week. Uh, what do we do have after the bell tonight? We've got Agilent Technologies. Uh, this thing's kind of around where it closed out yesterday, so no 
big surprises on this. Um, very tough to get a read on this one. It's just in a central trading range of about 45. When you look at the options on here, they're looking at maybe two bucks up or down. So if you get a surprise out of this one, it will be a surprise. No one's looking for a great deal out of it. Uh, as we said uh, earlier, um, Agilent after the bell uh, tonight. Um, and uh, we'll go through the rest of the earnings here in a second. Um, what do we have uh, going on here? Uh, before the bell tomorrow, Jinko Solar, Lowe's uh, Companies, which is, of course, uh, already getting a little bit of uh, love from what happened to Home Depot today. After the bell, probably more important and maybe a little market moving will be Cisco. C-Trip, the uh, Chinese uh, travel company, L Brands, which I think they already pre-announced. There may not be much in that one. Now, when we get into Thursday, much more action. We've got Best Buy, Periella, Staples, and my guess, it's going to be Walmart and Best Buy setting the tone in the morning, at least for earnings. After the bell on Thursday, uh, Post Holdings, Ross Stores, Salesforce, and Williams Sonoma. My guess is Ross Stores and Salesforce are going to be the surprises uh, one way or another. Friday, Foot Locker. So that kind of sets up what we're looking at for the rest of this week on equities. Uh, and again, I just don't see any kind of real pattern out here on earnings. Uh, do, 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 let's go back up here and look at it. Okay, 2.9 billion shares on the NYSE consolidated tape. Uh, you can email me at uh, path at tfnn.com. Uh, question from Dan who is from Clearwater and not from Lutz. He says, uh, would you look at uh, Delta and tell me if this is ready to short? And the answer is no. And I will tell you why. Um, Mr. Buffett is getting into the airline business. For 20 years, he's had uh, one of these cute sayings that he loves to say. And that is, if you want a billion dollars, start off with two and buy an airline. Um, of course, the implication is that half your money will be gone. Uh, probably not too far from the truth. Is he getting into these businesses way too late? I think the answer is yes. Um, but he's got kind of a different time frame and probably figures out that if he goes in there, backs uh, a few of these airlines, that he can do a lot more with them, uh, get some good uh, money people in behind it. These tend to be run fairly shoddily because they go in and out of business every three or five years and then claim bankruptcy. But uh, why I wouldn't be out there uh, trying to short into these airlines that Mr. Buffett is buying is that he's a big fan of getting an initial position, waiting for the stock to pull back and then buy it again. Um, he could be buying for the next six months. He could all sell it tomorrow too. But my guess is that once he gets onto one of these, he's a buyer for a while. Every time it pulls back, if he's not getting out of it, he's buying more. And that is probably going to put a floor under Delta Airlines for at least six months, along with some of the other airlines. Uh, they looked fairly weak. Uh, the energy wasn't all that bad. But, uh, you know, I have a feeling that even though he's buying these, is he going to be rewarded uh, greatly? Uh, the answer is probably no. This is uh, one of the uh, buys that I really don't understand why he got involved with. Um, you know, it's, but uh, he certainly is one of these guys that whatever he says, pretty much uh, give five or 10 years, he will be all over it. He was, of course, famously uh, calling all uh, options and uh, other derivatives sewage and now is the single biggest hedger and uh, biggest uh, operation in Wall Street and on the in the world actually financially he's got four big buildings in Omaha uh, that are devoted to nothing but trading options and uh, equities and futures from everything under the sun and he makes a great deal of money under it uh, only to well, what did he start at he said it was sewage in 2003 or 4 and by 2008 had already fired up the biggest um, the biggest uh, business on there. So he almost wanted to just uh, take a look at whatever he does and just say in four or five years, he'll be in it. <laughs> 
So I don't know what else you can say about it. I just wouldn't be in it because he is very big on buying every time uh, something pulls back. And uh, eh, what else can you say about it? Um, he's pretty good. Uh, I like some of the other businesses in much better, though, than these airlines. I wouldn't go long, nor would I short it. My guess is this thing could go sideways now for a year. Uh, do we have any more questions, emails? Got a couple coming in here. But we don't have time. We will have time in the next segment, so I'll get to them then. Give me a call at 877-927-6648. Email me at path at tfnn.com or post a message in the den. of least resistance is david white's daily trading newsletter and if you're looking for active trading ideas then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service david uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his path of least resistance newsletter using a combination of equity trades along with options david keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And an uh, interesting article out here. Andy writes a lot of them for Sinking Alpha. Andy Heck, who has a show here on TFNN at 5 o'clock. A very interesting article uh, that has me wanting to uh, pound the table and saying, hey, Mr. Trump. In fact, I call him Donald when I talk to him. Uh, why don't you give Andy a chance at this uh, CFTC? He could be the uh, commissioner for all of commodities. 
So I'm going to throw his hat in the ring, even if he doesn't like it. I think there's a there's an opportunity here. It'd be nice to know somebody uh, a big cheese in Washington D.C. Uh, but a uh, pretty interesting article, and uh, that is uh, just if we could bring all the commodity businesses back to the United States, Dodd-Frank basically chased them all out. It looks like at least 90% uh, of Dodd-Frank is going to end up on the ash heap of history. Uh, only about 55% of it was ever uh, implemented. Everything else uh, was uh, – uh, you just got to figure that two guys that didn't know – uh, a hole from the ground from something else, Mr. Dodd and Mr. Frank. Uh, at the time, I think Mr. Dodd was kind of heavily drunk and Mr. Frank was in la-la land. Um, they should have just done one thing, and that is implement Glass-Siegel. Once again, got them all out of that business. Then you don't have to regulate it at all. But uh, they put on something that was, what, 1,500 pages, none of it ever got done, chased everybody else out of the business, uh, my guess is the better thing would be just to uh, implement uh, uh, the Glass-Siegel Act again, uh, chase them all out, and let everybody back. Uh, but uh, that's my opinion. But uh, if Andy was the head of the CFTC, I could call him and tell him that. Well, I don't know if I can do any good to push him over the hump. Maybe my phone call to Mr. Trump, Donald. Uh, we'll do it. But a uh, very interesting article out here on Seeking today. Physical commodity traders come back home. And I think that is a statement, not a question mark. Uh, but uh, an interesting article nonetheless. I guess he'll be on in the 4 o'clock hour and then on his show on 5. So uh, I told him I would throw his, his hat in the ring whether he liked it or not. Uh, what else is going on here uh, today? As we said, we'll look through some of these earnings. Um, advanced auto parts, a lot of people were short this because they had uh, been missing uh, as of most of the last few quarters. I think the last three quarters they missed. That's what all these horrible down moves are. Uh, everybody was very highly short this stock coming in. And while you have a huge move up today, this has gone back to the gap down, I think the last time they missed. Back here in August 16th, and uh, they came down on 3 million shares, back up to 5.8 million shares. Uh, a couple of things going on out here. Everybody was starting to believe that everybody was going to buy a new car. There'd be a chicken in every pot. And yeah, since the election, probably pot in every pot. But uh, we've got this big move down. We've got volume. It's gone up to this level. But... Uh, Especially on the lower end of the uh, economic scale, a lot of people were buying cars. Uh, we talked about that, but the whole, uh, the whole, uh, in the very low end of that business has gone away in the last couple of months, and that means that uh, with an average uh, car being on the road, I think 11 years now, uh, that that's probably going to go into 12 and maybe even 15 years over the next uh, few. Uh, years, especially now that higher interest rates have come. Uh, and that's good for any of these auto parts st uh, car uh, stories. I like working on my own cars. Uh, I am and did when I was a kid, and I now really enjoy it. Uh, Busta Knuckles is one of the uh, most interesting thing. And normally it's a great repellent for your girlfriend or wife that wants to pester you. Once you go out and work on the car, it kind of has gives off a, an aura that keeps them away. And uh, just working out in the driveway, I have more than a few other guys on the street that come down <laughs> with a beer to watch me work when I do work on my car. And nothing real big out there, but uh, just even changing your own oil. Oh, just a little satisfaction of a job well done. Um, but... Uh, I, you know, I do like going into these places and picking out my own antifreeze and doing at least some of the odd jobs myself. But it's very tough for me to see that uh, this isn't a business that you probably now uh, want to be short until you start seeing uh, the numbers of cars rise higher and sales higher. Uh, don't know exactly what the news was on Harley Davidson. 
uh, but it's down a little bit. Uh, it was out here early. I don't know if there's a whole lot out here. This actually had some decent moves uh, on earnings, which I think were back on the 18th of October. Nice move out here, kind of a little bit uh, of volume. Uh, open lower, kind of eh, kind of went and drifted off a little bit lighter out here. I don't really see anything. Um, you do have to say, though, that this did go through the July 29th high with lighter volume. You're starting to get back into that candle now. So you want to keep an eye on this in the next couple of days. Uh, da, 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 what else did we have out here? Mobile Eye. Eh, it's not doing much now. Tiva Pharmaceuticals. Uh, heaven or hell most of the time for pharmaceutical stocks. Uh, this one uh, dropped the chalupa after the bell last night uh, with uh, a warning about one of the studies uh, on one of the products they were developing it not going well. This is back down, but uh, you know what? Not as bad as it could have been. It's uh, going against its November 3rd low at $37.82. Uh, 19 or 40 million shares on that day. We got 18 million so far today. So let's say we come in for 25 million shares or so. Eh, this, you know, you might find some kind of lows in some of these stocks when we go back and look at the IBB and see what it's doing. This thing is rocketed up. Everybody and their dog was short. I thought this thing would get back down to the uh, 240 level. It looks like that everybody piled on. All the shorts got uh, squozen. Uh, out fairly hard, but now we're right back up to this level. Uh, most of the volumes drop out. In fact, today, fairly light volume, 1.2 million shares so far today. Um, my guess is, it, I'm going to look at short numbers tonight, but my guess is this thing's probably going to go through expiration somewhere around 300 bucks, squeeze a ton of money out of people that were buying puts down at the bottom, and uh, then we're probably going to look at maybe sideways to Christmas, maybe not, maybe it starts heading on. But I would suspect that somewhere between Thanksgiving and New Year's, uh, we're probably going to see the next round of selling come back into the IBB. More likely after the beginning of the year, though, I suspect now. The longer that we hold up uh, into Christmas, the more likely uh, that volume decreases all the way through the end of the year. And we start off the uh, year the same way that we started off the year this year, and that is with that precipitous dive down. And uh, we will continue to take a look at that. In the meantime, as always, give me a call, 877-927-6648. trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to tom o'brien's daily market letter market insights tom o'brien's daily newsletter market insights comes out every market day at around 9 30 a.m and provides tom's daily commentary on the broad market including the dow nasdaq and s p plus specific trade recommendations there's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity he'll give you the entry price price target and stock price of each stock and option trade with Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. 
Looking to diversify? Everbank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, visit everbank.com slash TFNN to find out what they can do for you. Again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Visit them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed has proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. And we got all the, uh, uh, the guys in the den talking about uh, changing their oil. Well, when the zombie apocalypse comes and your car doesn't start, and the uh, zombies are eating your brains. I'll be driving along because I'll know how to start those cars, how to change the oil, how to do everything else. No one will know anything. I'll be, I'll be like a god. Anyway, uh, just worry about the zombie apocalypse uh, on a daily basis. Uh, what else do we have out here? Dick's Sporting Goods. It's going to get the uh, loser horn today. <laughs> Um, this thing kind of got a bounce when its competitor went broke, uh, way overdone. Unfortunately, this thing didn't give you a clear signal to pull the trigger out here, but uh, it did drop the Chalupa in the punch bowl today. Uh, this did come and gap up, uh, fill that gap back on October 22nd with 27th with 1.5 million shares. Got it, uh, eh, 7 million shares today. So, uh, that's kind of telling you everything. <sighs> I, you know, I think that what was a sports authority that went bankrupt and they end up, everybody thought that all the business would be going to them. Uh, it still ends up looking like a lot of business is going to Amazon and uh, less business uh, to these uh, retailers, uh, especially in the malls, still not doing that good. I've been into them a couple of times. It seemed rather expensive uh, compared to just picking something up on the line many times or on sale so i can, i don't know if it's that big a deal i guess if you had kids you need stuff tomorrow uh, probably more important other than that and eh, it's kind of tough for me to see them uh competing uh, with uh, amazon uh to the point of being this overvalued uh but uh, down heavy volume today filled the gap did it with volume you got three minor gaps all the way down to 47 bucks uh, and I don't know if you can say anything else. You got a big gap down here at $39. Um, and I would not be surprised to see this thing kind of go sideways through the Christmas season and then maybe see a uh, weakness in the spring and uh, be in a bigger trading range out here from uh, this $60 range back down to the $39, $40 range over time. I just don't see that much business in it at the mall when I go by. I know that's a little anecdotal. Antidotal, uh, antidotal, uh, but uh, it is uh, it is what it is. I just don't see that much business in that store. Uh, of course, uh, we're talking about uh, earnings today. Uh, let's take a quick look at uh, at uh, Best Buy BBY. 
and see what they're doing. They had a lot of business uh, coming in uh, to uh, the Olympics. Did very well selling high-resolution TVs, ultra-high-resolution TVs. This thing's been going sideways for a while. I can't get a good hold on it, although this is probably one store I go to much more than any others. I tend to hang around in there and watch people on Sunday afternoon and what they're interested in, what they're buying. A little bit of, uh, of uh, intelligence. Mm. Spy work. Uh, I can't tell you that I see a whole lot other than Microsoft seems to be doing very well in their store. They still seem to be doing a brisk business in Apple iPhones. Uh, the rest of the store tends to look rather rather uh, uh, empty. So I think if they had their druthers, uh, they would have stores that are half the size that they have. I know that they're you know, kind of stuck with what they have now. Uh, but, uh, you know, we're probably about a week or two away from people really starting to go to these things and take a look at them. Um, I don't have a good feel for it other than the fact that this thing has gone sideways for a very long time. If it uh, whiffs on earnings, it's down to 33 bucks. Uh, if it uh, has big earnings, it could blow back up and go higher, uh, although you've got some overhead resistance at 42 and 43 bucks. So uh, I wouldn't be long this. Uh, I can't get a good handle on being short, uh, but that kind of sets up uh, at least the risk reward a couple bucks higher, uh, maybe uh, seven, eight bucks lower, at least from the chart. Da -da -da, what else did we have out here? Only the Home Depot, uh, FedEx went south on us. Uh, Terrasso, Mobileye. Did we do Mobileye? No, we didn't. They didn't end up uh, moving, though, even with earnings. Uh, what else did we have in earnings coming up that we'd like to take a look at? Uh, doo -doo -doo. What's else out there? Best Buy, Perry Ellis, Staples, Walmart. Let's take a quick look at Walmart because that could move the market come Thursday morning. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Yeah, I looked at this last week. I didn't see much in it then. Uh, gapped up on earnings last time. Surprised everybody. On the 19th of May, uh, this thing has kind of gone through uh, a nice move to the upside. It's pulled back. I dislike the energy that came off on August 18th, high back down to the 6707 low on October 13th. This thing has meandered without much juice other than an election day juice, which was on the 9th uh, with the 16.8 million shares. This thing kind of went up that day and has done nothing but go sideways out here. Um, you've got maybe $75 on a blowout earnings. Uh, this thing could test. And of course, more likely, I suspect, probably not a lot of movement on this from looking at the options earlier, but more likely this thing's going to drift down to about 65 bucks. Whether it does it before Christmas or not is more likely based on its earnings Thursday morning and what they say. Uh, my belief, though, is from being at these uh, and watching the parking lots on them down here, again, anecdotal, um, that uh, 65 bucks is probably much more likely than anything else, which isn't the end of the world. But uh, at that point, on very light volume at 65 bucks, this may be uh, a actual buy in this uh, market. Uh, let's take a look at some other stuff. Got uh, emails coming in to look at TLT. This thing is kind of bouncing around a little bit out here. Finally found a modicum of support. Uh, this goes back to the gap of, what is this, uh, the 6th of January of this year. Uh, that gap had 9 million shares. We got into it with 21 million shares, so kind of blew it away. We did bounce for a couple of days out here, but uh, not much of a bounce as far as I can tell. So we'll continue to keep an eye on this. But uh, I don't know what else you can say. A little bounce out here, not going to do much uh, for this. You need to at least retest 120.73 on the TLT. Uh, this thing has been nothing but a rolling auction. Could you bounce to 125, uh, 126 area? You could. Um, but, uh, man, when these, when these bonds get in a trend, they are very tough to break that trend. Uh, it does break them uh, a little bit, 
But uh, we are on the very far end of any projection of an ABC down. Uh, but sometimes these things just get a life of their own. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I think the easy money uh, is over on the TLT. Uh, probably going to get a little bit more. Got a question? And we'll talk about the uh, dollar when we come back. This thing is stuck at a hundred dollars fifteen cents on the dollar index. Uh, see if we see anything else other than this thing just hanging here at a hundred, like loose tooth. Does it go higher? Does it go lower? Does it make Julian fries? We will talk about this and more on the other side. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light speed world of ever evolving high tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And what do we have? Uh, we're up 13 points on the S&P cash volume is 3.2 billion shares which is still very good for any day if we were talking about uh, before last Tuesday. Uh, now, this is dramatically less than the last four days. So we are starting to see this volume come off. Uh, and, you know, 14-point move, a little bit more than I thought maybe we'd get today. I suspect we are going to pull back down into options expiration. On Friday, around that uh, 2160, maybe 2165 on a high. Uh if uh, we're going to have a big move, I suspect, at least in the equities, that that happens uh, maybe next Monday or Tuesday, much more likely probably Tuesday after options roll over. We're going to be going in, in, of course, into the Thanksgiving time frame, 
and that tells us a lot more about what's going on to that. But volume should really tail off uh, into uh, the end of next week. And, you know, if you've got a lot of people that are still short, then they're going to slowly um, cover and slowly the move that uh, move back up into Thanksgiving. Uh, there may be another opportunity, but again, short-lived because what do we go right into? And that is Christmas. So a seasonal bias, is there one? There certainly is if the market is going sideways. Uh, and it's kind of setting up very much like last Christmas did, which is very minor uh, move higher, uh, volume decreases, shorts continue to cover. Uh, you don't really get anything major coming out of it, uh, but that is it. Anyway, we're up 15 points on the S&P cash. Uh, let's see what else we have out here. Da, 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 da. Uh, got a few more emails. Let's take a quick look. Uh, okay, had a question about SSYS, uh, which did have earnings this morning. Let's get that. Correct. Um, you know, this thing down on volume today, your previous low is $14.48. Um, these things had a huge rally off the bottom with absolutely no preparation. Uh, a much better bet out here is to watch these lows come back in. Under 15 bucks on light volume is probably what you're waiting for in some consolidation. Uh, but uh, a lot of these things just had rip roaring moves that were uh, basically short squeezes off the bottom. Nothing had really physically changed in that business. And really nothing has yet. Uh, let's see how DDD is done. I suspect that these may be decent buys at some price, but I haven't seen anything technically out here that says so. Uh, DDD not quite as affected as uh, SSYS, but When's the earnings on this actually come up? Let me check that out. Uh, earnings date. Okay. This is March 13th. That can't be right. March 13th. I don't know what's wrong with this thing. It's broke. Uh, we know that the next one is not going to be March 13th. Maybe they just haven't put it in yet. Uh, but uh, you, know, you came down with heavier volume. You still need $12.34 tested on this one. But these things are starting to develop. Uh, if this came back, you got a few places below uh, to watch for. But nothing now, probably nothing between now and the end of the year. And probably, most likely, these buys on the 3D printer companies will be into the first quarter of next year. Anyway, uh, so when you can, not when you have to. We'll see you here tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. You're watching Tiger TV.